here studying the word of the Lord on the hood of my truck with a cup of coffee outside the motel room here in Albany, Georgia where we're in a revival this week at the East Albany Church of God services start 7 p.m. nightly and um, out here up under this beautiful oak some type of oak tree big acorns Squirrels has been out here visiting it too. Uh, but as I was under the shade tree, I began to think about how comfortable it is under the shade tree and how in the sun out here, you get out from under the shade tree, the temperature increases and it's not as comfortable. And I began to think about how in Joshua chapter 3, verses 1, God was about to show himself in his glory to his people, but they had came to a certain place called Shittim. That's in Joshua 3.1. Shittim was known for its Shittim trees, which were acacia trees, the acacia wood, the acacia tree. And this tree was known for its much shade with big leaves. And they lodged there before morning and or before the next day and they slept there that night but they were to cross Jordan the next morning and uh, Jordan we know was a representation of death crossing the Chile Jordan is often referred to as death and God spoke to Joshua the next morning in Joshua 3 verses 3 he said when you see the priest bearing the Ark of the Covenant my glory, my presence. He said, then you shall leave your place and go after it. He even told him in verses 5 of Joshua 3, sanctify yourselves today for tomorrow I shall do wonders among you. In other words, God let them camp out up under the acacia tree and shift them overnight. But he never meant for them to live in the shade. He just allowed them to lodge in the shade for a moment. Because on the next day, he said, separate yourselves, sanctify yourselves, go after me, follow me. Go after me where it might be uncomfortable, because it'll be there that I show you my glory. And to go somewhere in me you've never been, you've got to be willing to leave where you have been. Life may be made in the shade, but friend, the glory of God is often not found in the shade. It's found in uncomfortable places. In Luke 2, verses 7, there was no room for Jesus to be born in the inn, in comfort inn, so to speak. He had to be born in a cold cave on the side of a mountain with the stench of animal dung permeating through the air in an inclimate situation, a non-sterile situation. But that's where God's best was born, not in comfort inn, not in a place of comfort, not in the shade, but actually in a cave, in an animal stall, because there was no room for him in the end. And we see God's greatest, God's best, his anointed one, came forth in an uncomfortable place. And friend, I want you to know today that it's in uncomfortable places that God will do his best, where you'll see God's greatest, where you see God's glory. It won't be up under the shade trees of life where things are easy. It'll be in the heat. It'll be in the hard places. In Genesis 18 and 1, Abraham sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day, and that's when he saw God and two angels come walking to him across the desert. And it was right after this that he hears the Lord say, I'm about to give you your Isaac, your promise. And Sarah laughed behind the tent curtain. Friend, it was in the heat of the day. It was in the hard climate of the desert when he heard God say, my promise is about to come to pass. So when you're walking through dry places in a desert and it's hard and it's hot, Friend, this is where God brings his promises to pass. God's brought you to the desert, not to desert you, but that he might deliver you to that that he has destined you to walk in, his best, his glory, his promises. Hallelujah. The Bible said in Genesis chapter 11, verses 31 and 32, that Abraham and Sarah followed Abraham's father, who was named Terah. Terah's name means to breathe or to live in Hebrew. And they came to a place called Haran. 
Haran means the sanctuary, the place of ease and comfort. But God had called Haran, Abram, or Abraham's father, to go into the land of Canaan, which means the land of purple or royalty in Hebrew. God had called him to go to that place of royalty. In other words, the place of the kingdom of God, the place that was God's best. God didn't want him just to rest. God tried to get him to his best, but he couldn't because Haran embraced a rest instead of going after God's best. And some of us, that's what we're doing. We're, we're settling for a rest instead of God's best. We want to stay where it's easy. We want to stay where it's comfortable, where it's shady. Hallelujah. But God's glory is moving, and God needs you to rise. He needs you to go after him, even when it's in hard places. And Haran, the Bible said in Genesis 11 and 2, he died, or excuse me, Terah, he died in Haran. Ain't that a shame? God had called Terah to go to Canaan, to the place of God's best the place of the kingdom of God where God does his greatest. But Terah settled for rest. He stayed in Haran. He stayed in that place of comfort and ease, in that sanctuary. He stayed in the sanctuary. He stayed in the place of comfort instead of going to where it was God wanted him to go. Hallelujah. Because it would have been a little bit hard. And later on we see that Abraham hears the call of God that his father Terah first had and he leaves his kin in uh, Genesis 12, and he goes to Canaan, and we know how God blessed Abraham. Hallelujah. So, friend, God's best won't be found found in sh shady groves up under the acacia tree in a place called Shittim. you got to cross Jordan. you got to go through dying places, places where it feels like you're dying and you're being killed. Hallelujah. To go into the promised land, to go into places that God reveals his glory and his best at. So don't settle for the rest. Go after God's best. That's what I'm trying to preach to you today. In the mighty name of Jesus. God's best won't be found in the comfort end of life. In the hotels and in the motels where everything's easy up under the shady trees. No, God's glory will be found in hard places often. The Bible teaches us in Exodus chapter 20 and verses 19 or verse 21. The people stood afar off and wouldn't draw nigh unto the darkness. But Moses did, because Moses said God's there. Friend, don't be afraid of the dark. Don't be afraid of the delays. For these delays are nothing but a display for God to do this, just that, display his power, his greatness. Divine delays bring about divine displays. God's trying to increase his greatness in this delay. So stay with him. Move from the shade, even like Moses, while other people standing back, you see God over there in the dark, don't be afraid of the dark. Pursue God. Go after him in the dark. Don't let the dark deny you of God's next move in your life. And whatever you do, don't allow ease and shade and comfort keep you from going after the glory of God. Come on. Leave that rest and go after God's best. You may have to struggle a little while to get there. You may have to go through some more things to arrive at that place of God's best, but it'll be worth it, my friend. Come on, leave the rest and go after God's best. In Jesus' name.